Hey y'all, Scott here. You know, I was recently adding a brand new copy of Madden Away to my ever-growing collection when I contracted something. <laughs> Depression! Valentine's Day is only a few solid decibels away. Thusly, I have to find a mate. Like, really have to find a mate. So, what better way to do it than with a lack of confrontation by going on Tinder? Here I have my current profile, and I think it's safe to say I'm doing pretty well with it so far. However, in terms of activity, I'm absolutely bleeding loneliness out there. Tinder does have a pay-to-win option, though, with a little monthly fee. So I'm gonna run to the store and grab an iTunes gift card to purchase my way to intercourse. So I'm back, I recently bought some iTunes gift cards, one for me and the others for the next homeless guy I see on the street, because I'm just a giving person and, you know, he could use that iTunes gift card much more than I could. Now with the aid of Tinder Plus, I am cruising through matches. It's like a dream come true. H however, none are really responding to my messages. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. You know, I wish I could see how other guys talk to girls on Tinder so then I could see what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. That's it! I'll pose as a girl on a new account just so I could see how other guys talk to me. Now, before you get judgmental here, know two things. One, I'm only posing as a girl to get laid. And two, I don't use Tinder all the time. I only use Tinder when I'm bored or horny. Here we go, just a quick search on Google Images for that, and that, and here we go. My name is Glenda Siete and I'm a girl who likes beach balls. But I don't say that in my bio, I just cleverly make a beach ball my only other picture available. So I ended up messaging all these guys first and we have a fair amount of responses here. If your left leg was lunch and your right leg was dinner, I'd snack in between. Oh, like my navel? Is that a threat? Let's wait on the response there. Oh, oh! Looks like somebody said, hey, but I don't like the confidence in messaging first. I'm just gonna ignore that. So I responded to this man's first message, and he threw it in a direction that I'm really not a fan of. I'm just a lovable scam catfishing people for knowledge on how to talk to girls on Tinder and also for some really weird power trip. But I don't want to leave the guy hanging, so... Oh, uh, that sounds great. Would you like to swap emails? And just gonna delete that. Alright, so after looking at how guys talk to women virtually and how they present themselves, I think it's finally time to retool my profile. So I recently took a lot of new photos. I specifically got this dude who works for Shutterstock to do it for me, and I think these pictures came out pretty well. I also buffed out all the kinks in my bio and came up with this. Hey gang, King Handjob here. Just showing how much experience I have. I am what many would consider a party within a profile. You know, I'm just a fun guy, you know? In terms of future plans, I would like to be 25 years old someday. You know, I have aspirations too, you know? No ghost allowed. I've had too many bad experiences with those things. Alright, looks like I'm finally ready to start matching. Oh, wait, uh, I got a notification on Twitter. Oh, hot dog! Not only is an incredibly beautiful woman interested in me, but an attractive one as well. There's only two ways this can end. Marriage followed by... Sex. Or slight embarrassment. At this point, I'll take anything. Alright, let me just click this link to messenger. Oh, uh, okay, I'll, I'll come across women I know. Well, that's enticing specifically because the only women I know are cartoon foxes. Do you agree to keep the user's identity secret? No, because if somebody asks me, I'll start giggling too much and they'll see right through me. The women on this site are not at all interested in a relationship. BORING! Do you agree to practice safe sex? What is this, middle school? Lame! Age group, gonna go for the lows and the highs, and what type of body turns you on? Ooh, I love Buffalo Wild Wings! And what type do I prefer? I'll say all! Well, BAMO! Well, it seems to be a bit frozen. Well, I'll come back to this later, you know, wh while I wait for her to message me back, uh, I'll go back on Tinder and crank up the boost option and uh, talk to some girls. I'll use some of the tactics I learned from the other guys I've met. Uh, specifically, I'll try to be a nice jerk. I like your glasses, but you need to work on the freckles. Alright, so while I wait for her to throw herself at me, I think I need to do something different to my Tinder profile. Something to help it stand out from the crowd. Oh, I'll, I'll make a video to help sell myself, like a movie trailer, you know? Uh... The only problem is I sold my computer to help fund Tinder Plus. Uh, the thing is, you know, I spent $10 on Tinder Plus and $140 on the iTunes gift cards for Homeless Man McGee out there. So I guess I'm going to have to use Windows Movie Maker on my old computer to help make this trailer.
I was reported. Hey all, Scott here, and say, have you ever been in a pickle like this? Fellas, fellas, I am so horny! Well, do I have a bee's knee for you, so pop on your zoom soon and get ready to see a whole lot more than games, because we'll be taking a look at the guy game for your local Xbox entertainment system. Finally, a picture show for all of us with icy mitts. We're all definitely a bit hotty totty Let's get a wiggle on and play the game. Where the fuck are the guys? The guy game, America's favorite pastime, was released in 2004 for the original Xbox, PlayStation 2, and PC. It's a trivia game with a hearty dose of areola on the side. Apparently during spring break, there are girls, and they like to go wild, and the fine gentlemen over at Top Heavy Studios wanted to capitalize on that. They set up shop at South Padre Island during spring break and filmed the host Matt Sadler asking girls random trivia questions. If they get it right, hooray for them, and if they get it wrong... Anywho, that doesn't really do the whole game justice, so let's just take it for a spin. On the main menu, first off, have to issue an apology to everybody out there. Sorry, the guy game is trademarked. I don't know about you, but my next five year plans are ruined. Let's meet the babes first, and here we have a little bio of some characters in the guy game canon. Zoe wishes to be able to jog without pain, major props to the guy game for hiring an amputee, and Mandy and Mandy apparently despise interior decorating. Let's check out additional stuff, and stuff is right! Here we have pictures on location while filming, and yeah, that looks about right. These feel like pictures you find on a Kodak lost at sea. We even have the option to see some behind the scenes shots, which is great, I constantly ask myself just how did they do this weekly every time I play. Enough chitter chatter. Let's do it. The guy game is structured by episodes, thankfully. Got 30 minutes before work, great opportunity to work on your speed run. We're introduced to three more characters in the guy game canon. We have Lucky Lacey, who is the announcer for the whole shebang, and then commentator Steven Dick. Lacey mainly reads the questions, while Steven Dick brings some much needed comical relief to break the tension. For your viewing pleasure, here's Chelsea and her boundless knowledge. Think any of you pussies can get this question right? Oh, me, me, I'm a pussy! Going into round one, and here's our host, Matt Sadler, the face of every defendant in court. He asks the girl the same question you're asked, the faster you answer, the more cash you get, and then you have a shot at some bonus cash by deciding if you think the girl got the question right or wrong. You also have the patented flashometer to keep an eye on that goes up based on how much bonus cash you get. You start off with soft and squishy, next level being sorta of chubby, also known as husky, and the one you're aiming for is super stiff. On Soft and Squishy, the girls are censored with a guy game logo, which is great, everybody has their thing, and mine just so happens to be girls censored with a guy game logo. When you reach sorta of chubby, it changes to pixelation, and when you reach super stiff, well, let's just say this game deserves its E10 Plus rating. But you have to reach super stiff mode to unlock the next episodes, which is super lame. These episodes don't really change on multiple playthroughs, I should know. And you have to get the bonus questions right. The main trivia questions don't really matter. The bonus ones where you guess if the girl got it right or not, those are how you succeed in the game. Which is stupid, those questions you totally have to guess at. You can totally know what kind of fruit a Granny Smith is, but do you know exactly how dumb or anti-dumb this broad is and if she'll get the question right or not? A Granny Smith is what kind of fruit? Apple! This is the game that game design schools bring to class as an example to avoid. I'm sorry, it's just you have to put your foot down when you see a loved one doing something detrimental to themselves. But just because I start barking at the game, that doesn't mean it can't bark back if you're not doing so hot. It makes sure you know. What's wrong with you? Don't you want to see titties? <laughs> Yeah. Wait a second, there's a double team of girls? How's that fair? They get twice the brain power. This goes against everything the guy game regulations stand for. Round two is the balls round, a round that is completely optional, and finally we get to see why so many people were into the guy game. Four whole minutes of non-stop ball on target action. Round three takes round one and puts it completely on its head. You see, instead of guessing if the girl got the question wrong or not, you have to guess what wrong answer they give. Shaking things up tremendously, because a question about screwdrivers wouldn't be as entertaining if the girl got it right. I'm a bartender, I don't even know this shit. Ah, the age-old excuse. Also, wow. The absolute variety in question difficulty. The questions range from baby's first guy game to What US city sells the most blonde hair dye? What, are you too fucking stupid? But gosh, the variety of types of questions is insane. Like episodes one and two both have questions about decks of cards in Star Trek, and there's like a few other ones in there. Like what other trivia game can hold itself back and only pop in two card and trek questions? This game is truly earning a spot next to Smarty Pants on the shelf. And what better way to supplement a Schindler's List question than... <laughs> But can we all observe a moment of silence for all hosts out there? Sorry guys, but Matt Sadler won. Get over it. Move on. You're pierced. Nice observation. Congratulations, players! You've arrived at the Hottie Challenge! Shit, I'm too deep! The Hottie Challenge appears once super stiff mode is achieved, and now we have to bet on which girl will win the challenge of endurance, agility, and integrity. After completing an episode on super stiff, you get this crazy video at the end, and man, let me tell you, I totally had a dream like this before.
I did it! So overall, the guy game. Dream come true, but not all dreams are perfect. The flashometer needs some design tweaks, and I wish I could skip the flashing parts to get straight to the trivia, but other than that, thumb thumb. The only thing left to do now is to gawk at the credits. Uh, the man behind the original concept. The only man brave enough to ask, what if? And it looks like all girls that appeared in the game were over the age of 18, that's good to know. In the 20th and last episode of the game, the girl Diane was apparently underage at the time of filming. She was 17 and filed a lawsuit. Literally, the last episode, the last episode on the disc just had to include an underage girl. They were this close, this close to not creating illegal pornography. Gosh, don't you just hate when that happens? The game was recalled and Top Heavy Studios supposedly re-released it as a DVD entitled The Guy Game Game Over, but I don't think it ever came out. I can't find it anywhere, not even a picture of the box. Yeah, I should get rid of this. I'll take one. <laughs> he bought a legal porn. <laughs> hey y'all, Scott here. With Valentine's Day coming up, virginity is out of the spotlight. So let's celebrate by playing a game focused entirely on... Oh shit, it's pronounced breasts? I always thought it was pronounced beans. Street Fighter's probably the first thing you think of when the term fighting game gets flung at you, but when you're asked to think of another fighting game series, many will definitely bring up Dead or Alive. Easily one of the most beloved and iconic fighting games out there. Dead or Alive started out in the arcade as a 3D fighter, inspired by Sega's Virtual Fighter series. However, it needed something to set itself apart and to guarantee success. So, director Tomonobu Itagaki decided to add a giant dab of that whole sex thing people are crazy about. Itagaki, that, that name sounds familiar. Well, I'll try to remember him later. Right now, I'm more interested in beating Devil's Third again for some fucking reason. Oh, f is that guy? Ever since the franchise's inception, DOA has been infamous for its emphasis on the guy game's main selling point. Now, that doesn't mean it isn't a legitimately good fighting game. People adore this series for the gameplay. It just so happens to be a legitimately good fighting game that's also pro-breast. Now we're up to Dead or Alive 6, and the developers at Team Ninja have stated they wanted to focus more so on being a competitively viable fighting game, and less so on... Now, does this mean all the... has been removed from DOA 6? No. But still, if you're a fan of the... You may be a little miffed by this direction, but you may be happy to know that there's a full game out there with just the... After the release of Dead or Alive 3 on the original Xbox, it happened. Tecmo decided to butter up Dead or Alive's most iconic element and release it for $50. Oh man, I love volleyball! Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. Man, you can't get less beach volleyball than this. Putting this game on my shelf may make me feel like I have to clean all games surrounding it, but let's not focus on all this, and let's just focus on all this. Featuring Dennis Rodman, well there you go, it meets the quota. Oh man, we can gamble at the casino in this game! That's a pleasant surprise I wasn't expecting, that's the same feeling I get whenever I open up the newspaper. Oh sh**, they got Dilbert in this thing? Here we go, just a quick closed disc tray button away from the polygons of my dreams, but we gotta know what we're getting into before things get too f***y. The instruction manual has some great tips to live life by, like, like is like, and dislike is dislike, and use the A button to return the ball. Now of course you may ask, why am I resorting to real life virtual women this Valentine's Day? I could always try out dating apps, I could download Bumble, it's like Tinder for when you run out of matches on Tinder, or I could try meeting somebody in person, f Katomi's looking really good after saying that. Alright, let's play the Spike 2003 Video Game Awards winner for best animation. And, well... Sorry, human women. You've had a good run, but this game may help me in my quest to complete my character arc. I'm finally gonna get E-Laid! This opening movie shows us everything DOA Extreme has in store for us. We can look at women, and look at women. And now onto the story. After Dead or Alive 3, Zack gets crazy rich at the casino, buys an island, and invites the girls there. They reach the having a story quota too. This game won't stop. And here we have the ladies of Dead or Alive. Blinky, Inky, Pinky, Clyde, they've got them all. I have to pick my favorite girl of the bunch, and we have all this fun information displayed. Hey, age not available. That's Dead or Alive lingo for... We'll go with Tina. She's from America, which means she probably speaks English. And no offense to the other girls, I just don't want our marriage to fall apart after 10 years due to the language barrier. Tina's great. She plays Donkey Kong Barrel Blast and has Salmonella. Moving on to the island, and son of a bitch, that whole let's go with an American girl tactic to get an English-speaking woman fell apart. Everybody speaks Japanese. It's okay, Team Ninja was one step ahead of us, and we get some great subtitles. This review is coming along nicely. Lisa's our little friend, and we can start the vacation off by heading to the accessory shop and spending some of our Zack bucks and some trinkets. I have 10k to start, and I think two bottles of nail polish remover will do the trick. Let's head to the poolside next.
This is great. You think the guy that programmed Math Grand Prix knew video games would become this? Oh man, there's a mini game I can play. I've had so many gaming accomplishments. Like I almost beat Kirby Star Allies and I can't even get through the hopping game. After various attempts, I did it. Now on to 3-6 of the title, some extreme beach volleyball. Yeah, it's volleyball. We even have a dedicated ogle button when one of the teams win. Pop that finger over the trigger button and BAM! These matches can get intense, and by that I mean they never end. Of course, one of the main gameplay mechanics Extreme has is trying to befriend the other girls to play with you and be your teammate. I couldn't do it. We're sticking to Lisa. I mean, the volleyball portion of the game is fine, but why play volleyball when you could gamble? Anybody ever go to a casino that's not related to Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball? Yeah, those things are fun. I love playing slot machines and seeing if they deem me worthy enough to make 10 cents back. Casinos need like a Captain Commando cabinet or something. Slot machines don't cut it. Yeah, I think the most interesting part of the casino is probably the table game, so let's do some blackjack. I don't know what's going on here, but these words are making me pretty happy, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Say what you will about Team Ninja, but those guys know how to pick a font. Roulette, so this is what All In looks like. Yeah, I lost. Back in my room, Zach gave me craps, and I think I'm gonna spread it. This generosity needs to go all over the island. I'm sending two bottles of nail polish remover to some other girls. Well, shit. Onto another day of poolside, volleyball, gambling, good night. 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 Poolside, poolside, volleyball, gambling, good night. Jesus Christ! I at least need to change the song selection. We're a Baja men household. Even with the song change, I think I've gotten about as much out of DOA XBV as I can muster. But Scott, you may squeal, you can play the hopping game again. Well, it is true. I can also get leprosy, so really anything's possible. Even when you try to swoon over the other girls to be your friend, it's just the same thing over over and over again. Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball is an ogling simulator and not much else. We can play volleyball, gamble, and play volleyball. There are three more of these games. At the time of its release, however, it got fairly great reviews. I mean, it's everything us male gamers want in a volleyball game. Stimulating activities, a killer soundtrack, Dennis Rodman. And honestly, the graphics for the time are crazy impressive. Like, this game looks better than some of the games coming out today. But when Playboy, out of all publications, gives your game a 7.4 out of 10, that's when you know, oh wow, even Playboy can see through this shit. What a way to spend the week of Valentine's Day, living it up playing Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. Wow, just saying that hurt. Imagine actually doing it. It's pathetic. I should really start contributing more to the human race. Maybe I should start protesting and demanding changes to society. We eliminate the number four and replace it with the letter H. Outlaw headphone jacks. Foot gloves. Penguin flight school. Stamps for stamps. The MPAA should rate shirts. Reclassify aspartame as a vegetable. Make our a vowel. Hey all, Scott here. Valentine's Day, I'm ready. I've had the exact same holiday tradition since 2003. A bottle of wine and body spray. Now that I'm 22, I'm looking to spice things up a bit. That's right. I'm gonna successfully get laid with a Wii game, which oddly enough, it's harder than I thought. This right here is the Nintendo Wii. It had a little something for everybody everybody. Because of the varied audience that we captured, we got pretty much every type of game you could possibly imagine on this console. Fortune Street and the rest of them. I mean, the Wii had mature first-person shooters, exercise games, dancing games, platformers, role-playing games, f game, Sonic. We Dare by Ubisoft. I heard about this game in 2011. God, that was the year of horny Wii games. A trailer for the game appeared online and it was full of- Oh! And, what? And- How much? A oh, spank with the Wii remote. I'm sure a lot of Wii developers said, damn it, why didn't we think of that? So We Dare is a sexy couples game. There's so much to it. You nudge the Wii remote with your face, you spank the Wii remote with your hand. It's flirty fun for all for all. I mean, it's for players 12 and up, really, anybody from that age forward. Well, I never hear anybody talk about this game. I remember people talking about it when the trailer originally dropped, but ever since, nothing. Which is weird, the second Wii game that'll get you laid, that's a huge deal. Well, Wii Dare caused a bit of controversy. Are you f***ing serious? Well, considering the age rating was the same as Ratchet and Clank, I think some people were a little concerned. Imagine a kid trying to choose between these two. I mean, that trailer, man. Ubisoft pulled it from YouTube in the United States, and it only got a European and Australian release for the Wii and PlayStation 3 in spring of 2011. It looked like the company was basically ashamed after ads went out for this game, so they distanced themselves as much as they could from here in the States. I'm not sure if a US release was for sure for sure 
sure ever in the cards, but it for sure for sure never happened. Lucky for me, Ubisoft never accounted for the act of buying a product from Europe off of eBay. My Wii collection finally means something. I only have the Wii version here. I assume it includes all the sex it can. The PlayStation 3 version requires some peripherals, according to the cover. You'll need these. Hell yeah, you will. Let's not waste any more time. We are officially one disc slot away from me taking my innocence and just ah! What do I have to lose other than virginity? Let's play We Dare. Why? Well, the Wii is region locked. You can only play PAL games on PAL consoles. Now, of course, I suppose you can mod a Wii and find some way to disable the region lock, but I never took into account that I'm a fucking idiot, so instead I bought a European Wii U off of eBay. Now, while we wait for that to show up, we can look at the box more. So Wii Dare, obviously they were playing off of the Wii name, but only Nintendo can use that in titles, so Ubisoft changed the spelling and we're all good. Wasn't the first Wii game to do this either. Wii Ski, Wii Love Golf, everything these games did was building up to this moment. Peggy 12, huh? Yeah, this was a bit of a controversial writing, especially when the trailer implied sex, but I suppose the game itself isn't too bad. You can imply sex all you want, we dare, but as long as your game doesn't say fuck, we have to let the kids play. Looking at the screenshots, it looks like it's just a sexy WarioWare. So WarioWare. Oh, but it says it features violence and sex and bad language? I don't know, man. This sounds like my living room's about to be the Wii Dare trailer. And here it is. I am the proud owner of a second Wii U. I've had nightmares of this happening. So it didn't come with any cords. I assume I can just use my North American Wii U cables to play this. Europe does have different power outlets in the sort, but what's the worst that can happen? I'm okay if things get even worse if it means I can play Wii Dare. Plugging it in. Oh, thank God. The Pal Wii U, fully functioning. My hormones? Fully functioning. Who knew ecstasy had to load? This is We Dare, Scott's very first PAL import. Gotta say, it's pretty surreal to be playing this in Ohio. So gotta create my own avatars. I can't use your me or anything here, and Nintendo's pretty picky about what games you could or couldn't use a me in. I was so upset when I couldn't use mine in Manhunt, but at least We Dare has their own little fake me maker. No matter what guy I create, they all have this certain level of pudge, and the options aren't too deep. There's not a ton of ways to truly make the character look like yourself, unless you're the cat in the hat. Weirdly enough, lots of options if you look like that. After creating something God wish he created, we have to pick one of six personality types. Are we a big shot, some couch potato, yes, a jock? I created some other characters here, including a girl. I named her Impact because I always had a thing for that font. Such a great font. So bold, so fun, always using when you want attention. I always wished I'd find somebody who was just as iconic as Impact. Yeah, okay, I wanna fuck a font, who doesn't? All right, and on to the game. Do you want to use the Wii balance board? Yes. Welcome to the Wii Dare couch, where innocence leaves the building in, this thing now has different connotations. Each player takes a turn picking mini games via giant fuzzy dice. You click it, it takes us to this 10 second long loading screen. Anybody up for a fun fact? Well, if it's from Wii Dare, Sure! These definitely help lessen the pain that these loading screens take up 40% of playtime. And it's time for the mini game. Oh, man, I can't wait to see what this whole sex thing is all about. Did I miss a page? So this is a dancing game. I don't know what it wants you to do other than sort of shake your Wii remote around a bunch because there's no on-screen instructions. They just tell you to mimic your character on screen. You just try to do what your character does, but doing that doesn't really work. Just shaking the Wii remote over and over again does the trick. There are a lot of these dancing games where you just mimic your character's movements. You may ask, why not just do a Just Dance format where they tell you what moves to perform when? Ubisoft makes both games after all. And great question, Wii Dare fans. See, they do have mini games in here that are like Just Dance. So what's the point of these ones? I'd say half of the 40 or so mini games in We Dare are simply dancing games. Some of them are like this, the rest are even worse. Of course I was asking this, you were asking this, we were all asking this. WHERE'S THE F***ING?! What the hell is going on here? Look at this trailer, okay? They get naked! NAKED! Now look at the actual game. I play Mario Party minigames sexier than this. Nothing like a trivia game to get your pants off to. So after every minigame, you get a loading screen and then a question. Do you think about what you wear? Look at who you're asking. Another loading screen appears and we are back where we belong. The next player in line gets to pick the minigame and we can get some suggestive games every now and then. Mechanical bull riding. Sure, I can't imagine that in a game for kids under 12. Every now and then you have the opportunity to play a one-on-one -on -one partner game and that's where that We Dare magic comes into play. These minigames can be pretty intimate, squeezing your faces together with a Wii remote between them. Just another Wednesday. Eating the apple by hitting buttons with your face can get really competitive playing with the guys. Fuck you. Fuck you. And the spanking game where you have to put the Wii remote in your friend's back pocket and then rock them back and forth. 
Where's the spanking game? That was 20% of why I bought it. But thankfully, the stripping minigame is still here. That was 40%. Gotta stand on the weed balance board. It'll weigh you and you have to take off as many clothes as you can and it'll detect if you did or not because technically you're supposed to weigh less. I have a workaround though. Hold melon before, put it away after, easy high score. Got an entire cupboard for my weed dare accessories. Now I'll give weed dare this. Some of the mini games are kind of clever. Some of them you have to be blindfolded and your partner will tell you what to do on screen. There's a charades mini game where the word you have to act out is told to you via the Wii remote speaker. And if you're feeling particularly groovy, 60 out of the 40 mini games are dancing based. And 10% of the game does live up to the flirty fun for all tagline. I mean, the loading screens can be pretty kinky. But most of this game is just a simple Wii mini game collection. It would actually be an all right one if the loading screens weren't so abundant. Seriously, you pick a mini game, it loads, game plays for either 20 seconds or like three minutes. Mini game ends, loads, asks a pointless question, loads again, repeat. See, just because I'm horny doesn't mean I can't fairly critique a game. The controls are extremely hit or miss, and for a game with this cover, this trailer, and this minigame, the rest of it is extremely tame. It has slightly suggestive minigame descriptions and loading screens, like three minigames that can be considered risque. That's it. And to my knowledge, you can't spank in this game. It shows it on the back of the box. Ubisoft, thank God they have a support number to call. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Apparently, Weed Dare is considered contraband if played outside of Europe or Australia. If there's a sexier reason to go to prison, I'd like to hear it. <laughs> prison was okay. Met this guy Jerry, had few laughs, Palm got stabbed. But being the only person to go to prison for Weed Dare makes me the most qualified person to have an opinion on Weed Dare. And my opinion on Weed Dare is that it needs to learn a certain definition. Lifting isn't spanking! Hey y'all, Scott here. Happy Sweetest Day Weekend! Sweetest day is a celebration of having a second day to rub into the face of virginity. Think of it as an Ohioan variation of Valentine's Day, but in October. If you already thought October was scary, try mating. Apparently it's only observed in the Great Lakes region. Well, here I am in Lake Erie. I count, bitch. So let's celebrate a pointless retread of an already pointless holiday. If you need an analogy, it's like cleaning your bathtub. Well, for a holiday all about love and affection, I think I'll dabble in being lonely and horny. Question, have you ever been so horny that you bought a Wii game? Oni Chambara. DUDE! This is so sexy! Oni Chambara is a series of hack and slash games that prides itself on being one of those games. Listen, I don't just not understand it, I respect it. You know, I've heard about this series, but not a ton, and it's obvious why. It's pretty much been dormant in North America outside of just a few localizations. It started on the PlayStation 2, the first game titled Simple 2000 Series, Volume 61, The Oni Chambara. Why, yes, I do know why it's called that. All true video game fans know it, and I do too. It's simple, understandable, it's practically overstandable. It was a series of budget games released by D3 Publisher in Japan. Now that first game did make it to Europe under the title Zombie Zone. Where's my passport? The series has had a more consistent track record getting released in Europe compared to here. Anything you wanna say? The first one we got was on the Xbox 360 titled Oni Chambra Bikini Samurai Squad, which got a sequel on Wii, Oni Chambra Bikini Zombie Slayers. They released the same day. You know, for its localization, they really changed things up and removed an E. We gotta bring this over to America. What do we change about this image? Too many letters! Both got pretty poor reviews. Surprisingly, the Wii one did a bit better. I saw this on a few worst of 2009 lists for the Wii specifically, which made it hard for my mom to buy me the game. I don't know, GameSpot gave it a three. But the series is still going strong with consistent enough worldwide releases like Onichambra Z2 Chaos on PS4. You know, for pre-ordering the game, you could get the DLC cost Strawberry Banana Surprise. Can I show this? Well, I can show the disc, damn it. I've been on a roll playing some of the worst games of all time. I beat Ride to Hell Retribution. So what's Oni Chambra for the Wii gonna do to me? That, I wish there was an incognito mode. Warning, this game contains scenes of explicit violence and gore. But just the right amount of punch! Well, here we are. If we stay on the title screen long enough, a video plays. We tolerated this quality in 09? You think this 120p video is enough to turn me on? Well, lucky you, I have a slow metabolism. Let's f***ing do this! Look at all these settings. We can change the blood color. Oh, this game is so sexy! We can choose between Aya and Saki. Let's pick her and Jesus Christ, the time starts before you even jump in! Oh, f***! I gotta get started! We get some background in the form of a credit scroll with a static image in the background, but it does quite a lot to make me realize these are real beings. Like, think about this. These people have social security numbers. They didn't spring on the English voice acting, but that's okay. They made sure to make up for it with five minutes of mute credit scroll. 
It'll take a lot for that to go down. On to the game plane, which we have to waggle the Wii Remote and Nunchuck to attack. Oh, no! To anybody that automatically dismisses all things motion control, you're a coward, all right? Motion control is one of the biggest core innovations in video games within the past 20 years. The problem is, this is the main thing people think it's all about. Now, would it be better if the attacks were handled by buttons? Yes. But... This works okay. It's fairly responsive, and my arms didn't get tired like I thought they would. Wait, what the hell? I'm not horny, I'm just satisfied. That is until randomly, I, I can't kill the enemies anymore. I don't know what's going on. Turns out, the more you kill, the more blood you have to wipe off your sword, and if it gets to be too much, it won't work. In what world does the amount of blood on a blade affect its stabbing ability? Try again! It's weird because you can always wipe the blood off your blade. It's easy to, and it's quick. You can wipe it off when the blood level is full, so it's not like, oh, you messed up, game over! If your sword is filled with blood, it's just like, just wipe it off, no big deal. So it's not annoying, it's just more so like, why is this mechanic here? So this first chapter takes me roughly 15 minutes to get through. A chapter two, like a minute and a half or so. We go from a graveyard to some churchy vibes, a hospital station square? DUDE! Sonic Adventure was the first 3D Sonic game because people can't count. This is the GameCube version, Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut, which I always thought was a fun pun. You know, the Director X Cut. That was the only form of joy I got from this game for years. Station Square is sort of our hub world and an excuse to stop playing Onichambra. It's one of the few things it's really good at. Okay, fine, we'll go back to playing Diet sex. My god, this game is far tamer than you'd imagine. The zombie slayers are in bikinis, so congratulations, your title's a checklist. The gameplay isn't anything special by any means, it's just a button masher or an elbow fucker. It's just a poor man's bayonetta for when you want to see half-naked women. Just get to the end of each state, slaying all the zombies, and that's it. If you play as a different character, you get different scenarios in the same environments we've already played in, but I'll give them that. Variety is the spice of life, and so are ass cracks, so this game has it all. However, on the gameplay and horniness front, it falls a little flat. I can't lie to everybody, you notice. The gameplay is serviceable, but repetitive and uninteresting. The horniness? My god, man, I've gotten more juiced up eating bread. Oh! Which isn't much of an insult. But for a game like this, I'm expecting sheer absurdity, surprisingly good gameplay, both, or just a flat out bad game. This gave me none of that. Which is why, concerning the holiday, I'm about to give you five better games to replace the act of mating. First up, at number five, Bart Simpson Fun Pack. Number four, Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. <laughs> F*** you if you had sex instead of playing that game. Number three, going to Bass Pro Shop. Can you tell I'm single? Number two, Snoopy Silly Sports Spectacular, also known in Japan as Donald Duck. And finally, at number one... RATS FOR GAME BOY COLOR! This game disappointed the hell out of me. It wasn't surprisingly good, it wasn't memorably bad, it wasn't even sexy enough. It just left me feeling empty on Sweetest Day, which, who could have expected that? Uh, now what? Wanna go to Bass Pro Shop? This is Bass Pro Shop, your one-stop shop to making up for not giving a shit about Onichambra. Is why they're still in business. You think it's all about fishing and hunting, but no, they sell all kinds of things here, like magazines. Bugs, salt, and guns are my three favorite things. Put them all together, it's all over. There's so much damn food here. Fish fryers, hot sauce, Bass Pro Shop soup socks? The ultimate wool socks to be exact. Hell, even moon pies. I'm a country boy, damn it. Look at the ambiance. This puts me in the perfect mindset of, that's right, I do want to fucking kill those things. The Cabela's action play set. If you want to use your imagination, pretend you're hauling a boat. Anything's possible here, but not everything's possible. So here's my Bass Pro Shop haul. Uh, first up, I bought bear spray. Uh, helps get a bear away from ya. Or you could just shoot it. Fruit roll-up trays, I love the candy. Ground meat freezer bags. A uh, bear bell, uh, attached to belt or pack when hiking, camping, or fishing in bear country. I guess it makes it easier for a bear to find you. Hot sauce, pleasure and pain. Only well, Charmbo was a fluke, I had to make up for it somehow. Uncle Buck shredded jerky chew. Wait, that is shoe shine. All right, we can wash down accidentally consuming shoe shine with some moon pies. You know the old saying: pop on a huck hat. I think they forgot a why. And finally, show off my synthetic raccoon urine. Of course, you may say, Jesus, Scott, really? Synthetic raccoon piss? And to that, I say, don't worry. The fox one is real. Well, that's how I spend my sweetest day. Maybe next Valentine's Day we can play something a little more lewd. But in the meantime, if I showed you that. It's okay to be alone in times like this. 
and just focus on yourself and your hobbies. And eventually, you'll find your right person, and it'll all make sense. Not me, though. I'll stick to ignorance.